With better and better TVs coming out, you have to admit that the GameCube's starting to look very bad. Unfortunately, those component cables that were also available through the GameCube are outrageous. However, someone has finally developed an HDMI mod that you can convert your GameCube to work with any HDMI television. For this modification, you'll need a couple of screwdrivers. First, a 2x4 Phillips screwdriver, which basically means a large one. A game bit, which is a proprietary screwdriver, which some people recommend melting a pen, but I don't. And finally, a precision screwdriver for t four little screws on the inside. I also recommend having something to contain all those screws in, because you're not going to want those spilling everywhere. Now with that, you'll want some soldering equipment. I've got two types of wire. Uh, some solder. Uh, one type of wire is just kind of like a telephone, kind of cheap wire, and a really thin 30 gauge wire which you can pick up pretty much anywhere. Um, in addition, you might want a helping hand tool to hold stuff. You never know, soldering can be difficult. Now, of course, you'll need the soldering iron itself. I usually have it at, as you saw before, 760 degrees, that's Fahrenheit, and it's good to have some wire strippers as well, because without those, it would be very impossible. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do is flip the GameCube onto its underside. There you'll see four screws that is holding the entire enclosure together that can be removed with that proprietary game bit screwdriver I mentioned earlier. Once those are all taken out, as you'll see in a moment, the entire shell can be lifted off and put aside freely. Now on the inside, you'll see that the controller ports can easily be removed with two tabs on each side. Then it'll dangle by a ribbon cable which can easily be pulled out with just a light tug. Now the same can be done on the back side, except this is just a piece of plastic, so you don't need to worry about any cords. Now, rotating the GameCube around counterclockwise, this is the best way to disassemble it. You'll have multiple, multiple screws on each side, and it's best, like I said, to do it counterclockwise, starting with the edge with the most screws. So let's do that right now. All that happened right there is I just disconnected the red wire for the power, and that allows me to unscrew the fan. Underneath there, it'll reveal three more screws. Once all of the screws are taken out, you're probably going to want to protect that lens. So either put it on a disc, or put a Kleenex over it, or some sort of paper towel, and just tape that down so that you don't worry about scratching it when you put it away. Once you've protected the lens, you can simply lift off the disc enclosure, just grab it by the sides of the black plastic, and the entire metal casing that you unscrewed should just unplug. Now we're going to put that aside and work on the board we see right here. Now there are six screws on this heatsink. We don't actually want to remove the heatsink itself, but just remove those six screws so we can unclip the board from the plastic. So we're going to unscrew all those six screws. You may want a different screwdriver. Again, usually you'll want more than the tools I mentioned, because some things can be tricky in life. Now again, we're going to try to remove the board and not the heatsink itself. So just pull it out from the plastic, and we can move the plastic to the side. It's pretty securely in there with that power plug. Now we're going to want to desolder and remove the entire port farthest to the left, which is the digital port. 
This can be very tricky and I recommend either having a solder sucker or some sort of desolder braid that will allow you to easily get it out. Even still, it was a tedious process that even I didn't film because it took about 15 minutes just to get every single one of those points desoldered so that the entire port would fall out. So I'll skip ahead and that's what it should look like right when it's pulled out, just those empty holes, and we can begin to work on them. The diagrams are in the description and I'm not going to describe exactly every single point, you're going to have to want to reference those diagrams in the description. So now we need to line up the actual board itself. As you can see, with the GameCube uncut or modded, it's not going to fit when we put that shell back on top. So we're actually going to need to cut away with tin snips, I use tin snips, or you can kind of use a little tiny saw to cut out a little corner in this metal. Now don't worry about it damaging anything because we only need those two screws on the edges to hold it in anyways because there's a multitude of screws to hold in this enclosure. So go ahead and cut those out. But um, if you're worried about damaging the actual lens and all that armature, you can unscrew this metal completely separately with your precision screwdriver. And pull it off and it'll reveal just the metal piece itself. Now with that removed, now we can go ahead and cut it like you see here. We're leaving just enough room for that piece to fit in. In addition, you'll also want to clip out that little plastic pin that holds in the actual disc armature as well. Now you can see that when we actually go to attach this together, it should fit perfectly fine. And it doesn't look that bad either. I mean, what can you do for a mod like this? So now for the soldering, I've gone ahead and fast forwarded this part for you. Once you finish tediously installing all those wires, you can glue the entire board down with either an epoxy or some sort of hot glue, and then reassemble the entire GameCube. I'm not going to go over that process since you basically just saw it, but it's in reverse. And now essentially you've finished the mod. Now you can test it and see how the results look.
So as you'll see, you get sound, you get everything you want. It's not perfect, obviously, because it's not originally 1080p or anything like that. We're not talking about a Wii U here. But you can bring up the menu. Oops. There we are. And you can use uh, scan lines, all of that kind of stuff. You can change the settings for each one with X and D. I've got the whole ma manual online in the description if you need to look at it. Um, and there's plenty of... Uh, there might be some help out there to help you. That one usually screws everything up. So I recommend keeping that on. And uh, yeah, you can turn the scan lines on. It'll add the little like effect. You can't probably see it. It's that arcade effect. I should keep it off for the GameCube. Anyways, I hope you found this somewhat useful. It's been a, uh, it was a very difficult one. Definitely not for someone who hasn't done any kind of mod before. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one. One last thing I forgot to mention in the settings is you're definitely going to want to have enhanced DVI mode on, as if you turn it off, you won't have any sound. So you definitely want it on, and then you'll get all the sound you need. Alright, now thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you next time.